Hey everybody, it's Josh Goodman at the State Archives of Florida. For the past few weeks, we've been helping to celebrate the bicentennial anniversary of the establishment of St. John's County by looking at some of the remarkable historical records available at the State Archives and the State Library of Florida. And many of these records have already been digitized and are freely available to read and enjoy on FloridaMemory.com, kind of like the street scene from downtown St. Augustine that I have here that's coming from the Florida Photographic Collection. But now, what we have on Florida Memory is only a fraction of the total collection that's available at the State Archives and also the State Library here in Tallahassee. So we want to take a look at some of both. We're going to look at some examples of great records that you can find on FloridaMemory.com relating to St. Augustine and St. John's County. And then we'll also look at some material that is, uh, we'll show you how to look up material that is still not digitized, but is available for the asking from the collections that we have here at our research facility here in Tallahassee. Now, for the last few weeks, we've been choosing different themes for every one of these sessions. Today, I'd like to focus on records that reflect St. John's County's long and storied history as a destination, a place to visit, a place to spend the winter, or maybe even start a new life as a farmer or an entrepreneur. And I want to start with one of the oldest examples of marketing materials that we have in the collection. It's an 1872 booklet that's called Visit St. Augustine. Not, a, not exactly the most creative title, but we'll give them a pass. It was 1872. And here we go. Uh, it's the first result that shows up in my search results when I did a main uh, top-level search. Booklet 1970, uh, 1872. You'll notice that it's missing the cover that goes right into the advertisements. Our edition is missing a cover, but we have done some research to determine exactly which booklet this is. And like all objects on Florida Memory, uh, you'll find a nice catalog record here that's going to have some information about where the material comes from and uh, lots of good stuff there. And then we can look at each page in the resource here. You've got all the thumbnails uh, that go to all the different pages. And every thumbnail that you choose, I'm just going to scoot over to the next one. Here we go. Uh, every one that you see, you can click on and you can zoom in. There's a couple of different ways to zoom in. Most of you are using browsers that once you click on an image, it's going to let you toggle all the way to zoom uh, fully in or zoom all the way back out. Another way that you can uh, zoom is if you're on a Windows-based computer, you can hold down your control key and then use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and zoom out that way so that you don't have to toggle uh, between those sort of harsh extremes that you have there. All right, so that's a great way to view these objects. Now, these booklets, we've got a lot of these different booklets, uh, these marketing advertising booklets from the late 1800s and early 1900s. We have these for cities all over Florida, St. Augustine included, and they all kind of follow a general format. Uh, they all describe local attractions, transportation facilities, the local climate, sometimes even going into talking about average temperatures at different time of the year, healthfulness, sanitation. This is very important at a time period when there's not a whole lot of vaccines out there. Things like the yellow fever are still coming to Florida from time to time. These are all very important to prospective visitors. Uh, and then, of course, uh, running throughout this is the hope uh, that people will consider uh, the place that's being marketed for maybe a farm or for some other kind of business investment. Uh, so they're always looking to talk about ways of cultivating the land. Uh, there'll be testimonials about what it's like in here. But there's two features that are kind of unique about this book from St. Augustine in 1872 that I think are important to share. One of which is uh, they actually wanted to show people uh, potential designs for houses. And so uh, they even have diagrams in here showing you uh, what they thought that houses should look like if you were going to come and settle in St. Augustine. The other thing that I think is really cool, there's another one. Oh, that's a that's one of the more intricate designs there. Look at all the staircases. Now, uh, but one of the other things that I think is really cool is farther along in the book, they have what they call the cost of living section. I'm going to zoom in on that here. 
and it's going to show you uh, the cost of different products that people would want to buy if they were living here for a lengthy amount of time. Look at this. Look how much flour was uh, for, for, for a barrel of it. This is a whole barrel of flour for $10. That's all the cakes you're going to bake for at least a year. Pork for $23 a barrel. I mean, we're, that's a lot of pork loin, a lot of pork shoulder. Bacon at 20 cents a pound. Absolutely incredible. 50 cents for a bushel of oysters. Shoot, I'd be, I'd be glad to see 50 cents for a single oyster nowadays. Um, and then as we go down even farther, you've got, uh, these are different fabrics. No, none of them are more than 50 cents per yard. Absolutely, uh, amazing, these prices. And of course, looks like I've got everything zoomed in, so I can zoom back out in my browser right there if I want to. Now, in those early days after the American Civil War, Florida still had kind of a reputation for being a place that you went to recover from illness. Yes, there were people who were settling down here for good because they wanted to make homes for themselves, because they wanted to farm and that sort of thing. And there were people coming down here to hunt and to fish and to take excursions and things. But people really thought about Florida in the public consciousness People really thought about Florida as a place that you went to restore your health. If your doctor told you that you uh, had consumption or you had some kind of illness that might benefit from the waters of a mineral spring or from being in a place that didn't have the cold, harsh air of a northern winter, uh, then you might get a prescription to come right on down to Florida and spend some time, if you had the money, of course. And so... Uh, that is, uh, that's, that's a big part of Florida's sort of tourist identity in the late 19th century. One of the factors that begins to really change that in the late 1800s is the arrival of Henry Flagler. And, and the arrival of Flagler, you know, when he starts putting in these hotels, they weren't so much just for the consumptives and for the, the folks who were coming down, uh, to restore their health. But Flagler built hotels that were meant to be enjoyed just enjoyed. Uh, and so, you know, Flagler made millions of dollars through his association with the Standard Oil Company. He first visits St. Augustine in 1883. He really liked the place, but it lacked proper hotel accommodations and a rail system to adequately serve a more sophisticated clientele. And so he started working on changing that. And uh, we have a number of uh, booklets and pamphlets and, and photographs and postcards and things that come from those hotels that Flagler built. And I want to show you uh, one of my favorites here. And this one covers the three big ho Flagler hotels in, um, let's see, I'm going to add the word booklet to that because I want to make sure and get a look at the booklet. There we go. There it is. Hotels Ponce de Leon, Alcazar, and Cordoba in St. Augustine. The Ponce de Leon is kind of the big one. That one gets completed in 1888. And then the Alcazar was built as an overflow hotel. If you can imagine, if you've seen, uh, I can't imagine the Ponce de Leon needing an overflow hotel, but it was so big that, and, and so many people coming down there that apparently it did. And then also Flagler bought a hotel, the Casa Monica Hotel, and turned it into the Hotel Cordoba. And what we're looking at here is a publication of the Flagler Hotel system uh, that is advertising all three hotels at once. And they've done this beautiful lithography here and then some great engravings to kind of show you what the hotels look like. And this is not my favorite view of the Hotel Ponce de Leon. It looks like it's kind of abandoned and stuck off in the bushes. But what you're actually looking at is grounds outside of the hotel proper. And then moving along a little farther here, we've got the Hotel Cordoba. And get this, this is like one of the cadet hotels. This isn't even really the main dish. That's the Hotel Ponce de Leon. And then here's the Hotel Cordoba looking so incredibly detailed and ornate in all of this. It just screams Victorian era. I love it. Okay. And then if we keep on going through the pictures, they start getting into more detail. We get a look at, I think there's a, a, a an engraving there of the pool and the casino. And then here's the uh, central section of the dining room in the Hotel Ponce de Leon. And funny little side note here about the lighting. 
you'll notice that they have electric lighting here. When the Hotel Ponce de Leon first put electric lights into the hotel, they had to hire a whole extra part of the staff just to go around to all the guest rooms and turn the lights on and off because the patrons were, in general, so unaccustomed to using electricity that they were afraid to touch the switches because they were afraid of being shocked. And so if we keep on looking through, we see some other views of the different hotels. Here's the court of the Ponce de Leon, so this is a nice view of that. A little better than that one that we saw from the grounds. And let's see, let's get a look at one more here. There's the Alcazar. With those nice towers right there. Look at that. Beautiful pieces. Okay. Now there's one more piece I want to look at before we leave the Flagler Hotels because we've, we've got some great stuff on that. And the photographs, if you look in the Florida Photographic Collection, we've got some great photographs and postcards from these hotels and others in St. Augustine. But there's one I really want to show you, and it's the Ponce de Leon Hotel Menu. And you'll notice that a lot of times when I'm doing these searches, I'm leaving some articles and other words off. The reason I'm doing that is the search engine functions best, uh, and this is true for all search engines that are not, that don't have a whole lot of predictive uh, capability like Google. Uh, if, if you just focus on the most distinctive words in the object that you want to find, uh, then, you know, in the title and description, you're going to have the best results. And, for example, I'm getting exactly what I'm look, looking for and very little else uh, by looking for the Ponce de Leon Hotel menu that I wanted to find. And here it is. This is from 1889. So, let's see, the Ponce de Leon Hotel is finished in 1888. This is probably the spring of the hotel's first season. This is an example of a dinner menu from that. And I'm going to zoom in so I can see this a little better. This is what it looks like all the way zoomed in. That's way more detail than we need for just reading it. But you can imagine if you were doing a project, maybe doing an exhibit panel, if you've got a, a young person who's doing some kind of uh, Florida History Day project or something, this is going to be everything that you need and more uh, to put this on a board or on a website or something. Just a really nice look at what they're having for dinner. Lots of different courses, a lot of elegance here in the way that things are being prepared. But hey, we've still got fried chicken because it is the South. Take a look at that. So a wonderful piece. And uh, so we've looked at a lot of things from St. Augustine, but I want to take a look at some pieces that pertain more to the areas outside of St. Augustine because we do have some good material that promotes St. John's County in general. And I'm going to run a search. I've already got my search terms up here ready to go. St. John's County Booklet, I happen to know. And you can run this kind of search with any uh, with any county, any community, to see if we have something on Florida memory. And by doing that, it's pulling up all kinds of, of uh, material in booklet form that has to do in some way with St. John's County. This is another hotel that's not one of the Flagler hotels, the Hotel Magnolia. Here's one of the booklets we were looking at earlier. Here's a great uh, sort of uh, quick and dirty booklet on uh, St. John's County and St. Augustine in 1900. This is a very short one. Um, there's a couple of pieces we were looking at last week with the World War II material, but this is the one I really wanted to show you. This is a really good thick one, and I'm going to open this up in a new tab so I can save my search results. Oh, look, there's another hotel, the new Hotel Grenada or Granada, if you please. All right, and I'm going to move my browser back down to 100% just so I can see a little better. All right, we can see that this is coming from the State Library of Florida, the Florida Collection, and wonderful material in here about St. John's County. We've got a great map. We love that. And once again, we can zoom in on this and get pretty tight. By the way, all those weird irregular squares though, there, those are places where old Spanish land grants are located. We're going to talk about that a little bit in our next session when we talk about the Spanish colonial era. But just a little quick preview on that. By the way, if you see this message right here, it's just, it's just uh, the server doing some work. It'll bring your pages to you pretty quickly after that. So as we flip through the pages in here, uh, this is the, the main thrust of this booklet is trying to get people to think about St. John's County as a place to have farms. And it talks about all the centers of population in the county, not just St. Augustine, but also Hastings, okay, 
Elkton, Moultrie, Mill Creek, Tokoe. So lots of fun stuff there about those outlying communities. Look at this. A yard full of St. John's moneymakers, these chickens. They talked about, and they've even got bananas in here as a potential future crop. Let's see if I can find that. There it is. Look at this. Bananas, a coming crop. I got to be honest with you. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you can get bananas to grow. Those, that's an awful big freeze risk for those right there, but they were certainly trying. Uh, and then they've also got grapes down here being grown as well. So they're just, they're, they're trying to get folks to grow all kinds of things here in St. John's County. Now we've talked a lot about uh, the 1800s, and of course this this leaks into the uh, 1900s. Let's see what's the year on this pamphlet that we've been looking at. Okay, 1923. So we've actually sort of gotten into the 20th century already, but I want to get outside of just the uh, the the general promotion of St. John's County, and let's talk about individual attractions and how those are documented. One of the tropes that St. Augustine leaders love to promote uh, and love to use to promote the city of St. Augustine is the likelihood of Juan Ponce de Leon having landed in the area during his exploration of Florida in 1513. Now, of course, the exact location of, of Juan Ponce's landing is a subject of much debate, even now, by historians and archaeologists. Uh, but St. Augustine has never missed an opportunity to to... Uh, sort of latch on to that uh, Juan Ponce de Leon theme. And, you know, whole tourist attractions have sprung up out of this, and certainly a great deal of civic pride. And one of the best examples of this is the anniversary celebrations. There used to be a, uh, a celebration every year of Juan Ponce de Leon's landing in Florida. I don't know if they still do these, but let me tell you, around the turn of the 20th century, it was a huge marketing tool. So let's look at Ponce anniversary landing, and then I can't remember. Let's let's leave it at that and see what we get. One Ponce anniversary landing. Aha! There we go. The official souvenir program of the 397th anniversary of the landing of One Ponce de Leon in St. Augustine, Florida, in 1909. Now, I can go ahead and tell you that this is not the only one of these that we have. I'll show you how to get your hands on other programs from other years. But just to give you an idea of what's going on in these documents, you get a list of the people who are involved. So if you're working on a history of some aspect of St. John's County history or St. Augustine history, it's always good to look at these programs that are showing who was in charge of celebrations because it tends to be big civic leaders who have a lot of hands and a lot of other projects around town. So this can be a great way to sort of figure out which proper nouns you need to be researching for your projects. So we've got kind of a schedule of what's going on uh, at different times throughout the celebration. They've got a Juan Ponce de Leon day. They've got a day uh, named after Menendez. Uh, and and so, yeah, see, here's the one for Menendez Day. Uh, of course, uh, you know, the guy who establishes the city of St. Augustine uh, after, uh, m you know, many years after Juan Ponce de Leon had been in the area. Great stuff. Oh, and uh, so we were going to talk about how do you get your hands on more of these. So this is, we can see from the source that this comes from the State Library of Florida, Florida Collection. And this Florida Collection is something that you can search. You can search not only the material that has been digitized, but also material that has not yet been digitized to see if there's other things in the State Library's collection that you might need for a project. So the way to search the State Library of Florida's Florida Collection is to go to the State Library's online catalog which is at library.florida.gov. And once we get there, we can specify exactly which collections and what kinds of things we want to search. But I'm going to start with something really general because there's some great tools for narrowing down your search results once you get to them. So I'm going to look for more examples of those um, souvenir programs from those uh, Ponce de Leon landing anniversaries. I'm going to do the same kind of search that I did on Florida memory. Ponce landing anniversary and that's getting me exactly what I need here. Uh, celebration and commemoration of the anniversary 
our anniversary of the landing. Here they all are. It looks like we've got one from 1909, two from 1909, one from 1923, and one from 1913. This is a photograph. If we were to get a whole bunch of photographs in here and we're thinking, ah, we really don't want to look at photos, we just want to look at textual records, we can come over here to location and we can knock out the Florida Photographic Collection by saying exclude those. Or we could have said that we wanted to include, um, you know, uh, the, the state library's collections or something like that. Either way, you're going to get things narrowed down to just the textual records. One other kind of search is, let's say that we just wanted to look at just St. Augustine in general. Uh, let's see, there we go, St. Augustine. I'm going to put that in quotes because we've got a lot of St. This, St. That in Florida and I want to make sure that what I get back in my results is just St. Augustine. I've got more than 2,700 results here and I'm already seeing that I've got some stuff from the 19th century. So this is great. A couple of different ways to slice and dice this. If you want to look at maps, you can do that. If you want to look at just photographs, you can do that. Um, the reason you're seeing photos here is the Florida Memory website cross-lists all of its photos on the State Library's online catalog. But let's say that I really just want to look for booklets. All right. If I click on, I can click on, uh, check this box here and say, just include only State Library of Florida. Now that's narrowed thing, th things down to 610 uh, items. And I can go even farther and sort everything by publication date ascending. So that's going to put the oldest stuff first. So we've got some things in here, like here's something from 1743. All right, this is, now it's saying that this was published in 76, but clearly because of the, the ages of the author, the, the, the years that the author was alive, clearly this is coming from the 1700s. All right, and so we can just go moving right on through until we get to uh, wherever in time that we'd like to look. So here we are in the 1880s. This is that time period uh, where we got that um, that first booklet that we looked at in here. Look, Chapin's. Chapin's Handbook of St. Augustine, the Standard Guide to St. Augustine, Florida Illustrated, St. Augustine, Jacksonville, lots of great stuff here. So we're back on Florida memory, and I want to look for individual tourist attractions, uh, roadside tourist attractions and, and things like that that we recognize uh, from the history of St. Augustine and St. John's County. Now, I will say that where you're most likely to have the best luck uh, looking for very specific attractions, not looking for whole communities, but looking for very specific attractions, specific buildings, specific businesses. Your best shot at finding material on that is going to be in the photographic collection. Uh, now, you may see references to those places in some of the booklets that we have, but unless those booklets have been fully transcribed, uh, you, your search results may not include uh, the right stuff uh, to get you to those specific buildings uh, specific attractions, that sort of thing. So let's look. One of my favorites, I think, is the Fountain of Youth in St. Augustine. Again, going back to that Juan Ponce de Leon trope. So let's see what photographs we get back from that. Now, postcards are also going to be included in the Florida Photographic Collection. It's a long story. We, we rope them together just because they're all imagery and that's the way folks like to search for things. And it looks like we're getting some catalog records for photos. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. I recognize that one. This will be a good one. And then, ah, yes, that's a nice one. So, I, and you can see I'm just, I'm right clicking on all those. It saves you a little bit of time because these search results take a, a little bit of time to load. And so if you right click and open things up in new tabs, you can go right back to your search results without having to rerun the search, so to speak. So look at this. Building of at the Fountain of Youth attraction in St. Augustine. Beautiful covered in vines. This nice gateway. This is an older photo, not quite so good a quality. This is coming from a negative. I can tell that because it's got N in front of the image number there from 1929. Oh, uh, look, there's another one that's actually got the, the fountain right there in the middle. And then here's another photo. This is a little better, a little better quality uh, of, of the, uh, the Fountain of Youth right there. Look at that. Very sharp. 1907. 
And we could run the same search for any number of different attractions. Like if we wanted to do maybe the Bridge of Lions and see different photos and postcards of that over time. And look at that. There they all are. You can see it in the thumbnails. Uh, the way the bridge itself, of course, hasn't changed that much over time, but certainly the way that it's depicted has changed. And there's just so many different angles that you can get. If you were doing some kind of a project uh, on downtown St. Augustine, uh, these images would just be great. And street scenes, wonderful street scenes uh, from St. Augustine as well. And if you were to look for Hastings, let's see if we've got anything from Hastings. Let's get outside of St. Augustine for just a moment. Let's see what we've got. I bet you we end up with some uh, photos of the potato growing industry. Up, oh, yep, look at that. <laughs> We've got the 1946 Potato Queen, Peggy Davis. Look at that. Let's see. It's going to give us this message. Everything will load here in just a moment. There she is. The 1946 Potato Queen. Just all kinds of things. Try lots of different searches. If at first you don't succeed, try another set of search terms. And over time, you'll sort of get a sense for the way that things are named in here uh, by the catalogers, and you'll, you'll find the things that you're looking for. One last place to uh, look for good material on St. Augustine and St. John's County as a destination, a tourist destination, is in the film section. So if on Florida Memory we look under the Discover menu, these are where we keep all of the original records that we have here, uh, if we look at the video section, and let's just run a quick search for Augustine, see what pops up. Now you'll see that a number of these will have this little video icon. It won't have a thumbnail from an actual film. These represent films that we have in the collection that have not been digitized just yet. And, you know, you can see that there's several in here that are really great uh, for St. Augustine. So if you're working on some kind of project and you think that uh, one of these uh, videos that's described here may be of some use, this does not mean that these are not available. It just means that they haven't been digitized and put on Florida Memory. These can still be requested uh, through the uh, staff in the Florida Photographic Collection lab here at the State Archives. But we do have some videos that have already uh, been digitized and are available for viewing online. For example, this one on Florida Attractions starts out with some shots from St. Augustine, including the Fountain of Youth that we were looking at earlier and the Oldest House. Looks like we've got a series of commercials advertising Florida. St. Augustine is among the topics in there. And just as we go on and on, you'll see more places where St. Augustine pops up. Uh, look, we've got something on marine land right there. So lots of film uh, that's depicting St. Augustine and, and other uh, attractions in the St. John's County area. All right, we have talked about a lot of stuff. We've talked about booklets. We've talked about photos. We've talked about videos, postcards, uh, everything uh, that I can think of that would be a great way to uh, sort of study St. Augustine and St. John's County as an important tourist attraction. The last thing I want to do is I want to leave you with some contact information in case you have more questions about the things that you've seen in today's program or if you would like to request one of the things that you've seen in today's program maybe or, or something like that. Uh, we have here the phone number and email address for the State Archives Reference Desk and also the addresses for the databases that we've looked at today, floridamemory.com and the State Library's online catalog, library.florida.gov. We didn't do any work today in the Archives online catalog. That's the one at the top of the list there. However, that's another great resource for finding things that we have uh, at the State Archives that have not yet been digitized. So I uh, hope that you'll find all of this very useful. I hope you'll take the time to do some searching on floridamemory.com, find some landmarks and tourist attractions that you remember from your childhood and traveling around the state, uh, things that you enjoy and that interest you, and uh, hope that you'll let us know if there's anything that we can do to help you. Uh, and in the meantime, keep on researching, and happy 200th birthday, St. John's County.